Well, let's talk about talking about Cal Jader. Now, I know he recorded some of your music, and uh, I'm sure you knew him. Uh, tell me about when you met Cal Jader. Oh, I met Cal Jader many, many years ago when he was uh, playing drums with George Shearing. And uh, he used to come up to the Palladium. He was appearing in Birdland, which was a jazz corner in New York City. And I was at the Palladium, it was a ballroom. And they used to come up and enjoy our band. He enjoyed lots of music for many, many years. And then I, I, I impressed him a little bit because I was playing vibes too. And he loved, naturally, he became one of the top uh, vibe players in, in the world also. And uh, we were very good friends throughout all, all his life. Now, it seems that when he came to the East Coast and heard your music and heard some of the other East Coast musicians, it really solidified his concept. And in fact, he took some of those musicians back to California with him, didn't he? Well, yes, of course. Uh, he had the great Mongo Santa Maria, and Willie Bobo, and with those two key men. And once in a while, he had Armando Peraza, uh, Francisco Aquabella. These people, they live out there in San Francisco and Los Angeles, and they were the one that really got him into what we call the clave, the real uh, typical uh, music, Cuban music or Latin music, plus his jazz playing, which is very interesting. Now, he he represents a phenomenon that, one end of a phenomenon that you're familiar with from another end. His most famous record, his most popular record, uh, Soul Sauce, yes, of course. is based on a Dizzy Gillespie That's composition. Right. Right. Now, your most famous composition, Oye Como Va, right. became very popular for Carlos Santana. Right. How do you feel about situations like that where a piece of music that, that one artist has written becomes so identified with another artist? Well, I was very fortunate because uh, Mr. Santana, Carlo, was a friend of mine. He recorded that number about 12 and a half years after I had originally done it. But uh, naturally, his recording catered to a mass, massive audience of rock, guitar, the organ, the drummer. So he gave it a different rendition. And that made like a hit for him, and it also made a, a, a composer out of me, really, because he gave me credit on the Abraxas album on Columbia label. So thanks to Carlo, I was able to get exposure for Oye Como Va around the whole world. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about your background, because um, I, you have a fascinating story, I think, just in the training you had and in how you developed and became a musician. Uh, talk yeah, a little about you. your youth and how you got into playing music. Well, well, I'm going to be very brief because you, you would have to write a book <laughs> and we ain't got time for that. I am celebrating now 50 years as a band leader. I started playing when I was 13 years old. I've been playing with all the major Latin orchestras like Machido, Norm Morales, Jose Cobello in the old days. And I developed naturally. I went to Juilliard. I studied a composition and throughout the years I've, I've been performing and I've had my band since 1949. I have now 117 albums out in the street. And uh, so for me, I'm a role model to all the young uh, musicians and all that. Uh, our music is getting a lot of recognition now throughout the whole world. So I'm very happy to be part of it before I retire, because I'll semi-retire within the next year or two, because I've been playing for a long time. You're one of uh, the first people who really impressed us as multi-instrumentalists. You Thank don't you. just play the uh, drums, you don't just play the vibes or the various percussion Thank instruments. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, did you have a primary instrument when you started? Well, I studied piano, but uh, I was always a percussive type of person. Even as a kid, I used to play on top of cans and on the wall and all that. So my neighbors were the ones that told my parents, why don't you put that guy that studies some drums or something? He's driving us crazy. So my mother put me to school and I learned drumming, percussion. So all my life I, I've been mostly a percu percussive arranger or musician. And I've always played the percussion instrument, the timbales, which has uh, two, like tom-toms open in the bottom, play kong and bongo, but timbales is my main instrument and I, I've made it very popular worldwide. You mentioned some of the early bands you played with, like Noro Morales and uh, wow. Bichito's Orchestra. And I'm, I'm not sure that the younger listeners really appreciate what those guys did and what they represented. No, they music. don't. I feel sorry for the young people. They they're not aware of what we went through. You know the music. Mm -hmm. Now uh, they're opening up a little bit because a lot of our percussion 
uh, rhythms are being used by all kinds of rock bands and, and house music, whatever they want to call it. Uh, even my son is involved in that house music. He records Tito Puente Jr. He did Oye Como Va and all that. And his own rendition, actually. So I called him up last week. Hey, Tito, how you doing with your recording? He said, oh, Dad, I'm recording house music. I said, house music? Whose house? <laughs> I don't know what I know about house music, you know? <laughs> so I'll never get into his bag. I don't know if he'll ever get into mine, because I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing. So I wish him the best of luck. He's doing wonderful down in Miami, but all the young people, new generation is growing up and into this house music and pop, whatever they call it. So our music is getting more exposure now. And thanks to that, uh, uh, the Latin music is getting more recognition around the world, especially a lot of Cuban music and all that, because a lot of people love to hear that and uh, they love to dance to it. Because I travel to Japan a lot, you know, Singapore, all over, and the I don't speak Japanese, they don't speak Spanish or English. So we just stare at each other, you know. Yeah. But once I start playing, uh -huh. they start dancing. So I united, and that's important. Now, you talked about the popularity of Cuban music, but also there's a great contribution from the island of Puerto Rico. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I was saying, you mentioned Cuban music, but the island of Puerto Rico has made a great contribution. Can, can you talk a little about the different styles from the different islands and, and, and how we might understand better what the contribution well, is? Uh, very nice question. Uh, I've been playing Cuban music all my life. Caribbean music, I call it now. Right? But we do have music in Puerto Rico, the bomba, the plena, the danza puertorriqueña, secho reales. These are different rhythms that come from Puerto Rico, the island. And from Cuba, we have the huahuancó, the cha-cha-cha, the mambo, the, the rumba, a different type of music, naturally, and very exciting. But now both islands are playing the same kind of music, a very exciting music. I, I, I like to call it uh, Caribbean music. Music from the, the Americas, right there from the Caribbean area, which is very exciting. And they call it salsa, S-A-L-S-A. -S -S -A. That means sauce. So I tell the people, you eat sauce, you don't see it, and you don't hear it, you know. But that's, a, that's the way they call the music now. They don't really specify which kind of rhythm it is. They call everything salsa, like a condiment of food. But it's a popular word, wonderful. But I've been playing the same music throughout my whole life, I'll continue playing the same way, so let them call whatever they want to call it next year. Yeah. Now another term that's become popular lately is Latin jazz. And yes. I think perhaps when you were a young man, people considered that there was Latin music, that there was jazz music. Right. Could you just tell us briefly from your perspective about how these two musics came together and became one music? Well, very briefly, uh, the mayor responsible, uh, Mr. Dizzy Gillespie, sorry, of course, with Chad and Cosmo. I'm sorry, Judge, if you would leave the playing box, please. Because I won't be able to take it. But you don't need the question. No, you know the question. And I'm sorry for uh, stepping on it there. Kind enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. What, are you yeah. writing a book? I <laughs> 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 no. Whatever you want, Tito. One of the persons responsible for putting out Latin jazz and giving recognition was Mr. Dizzy Gillespie with Chano Pozo many, many years in the 40s when he did Manteca, a Tintindeo, a Night in Tunisia. All, all, all these great jazz students had some Latin influence in the rhythm, and he was crazy about Chano. And therefore, they would develop a lot of Latin jazz. And I'm very happy to be part of it because it's a marriage between Latin music and jazz, and, and I love to play Latin jazz. I do. Now, you were very important in bringing jazz musicians into your bands. And I know for a time there was a feeling that jazz musicians played a jazz rhythm and Latin musicians played a Latin rhythm and that perhaps they didn't always mesh. Do you find that the musicians are more comfortable now crossing from one to the other? Uh, yes, very definitely. In fact, uh, this tour that I'm doing now is called Latin Crossings. And the reason for that is, like, some of the pop or jazz musicians even, 
they seem to be playing a lot of our Latin musicians have become good jazz uh, interpreters, you know, like Danilo and Davis and all these other different instruments, of course, Sandoval, the great trumpet player. So a lot of the Latin musicians have become very good jazz musicians. And the jazz musicians have always loved our Latin percussion rhythms anyway for years. So the marriage is right there, it's common. But in order to play Latin jazz, you gotta be a very good musician. A jazz musician is a great musician, but a Latin musician has to learn the changes and the jazz figurations and all the, uh, the harmonic aspect and, and melodic concept of jazz to be able to combine both music. Okay. Now I want to ask you a couple of questions about the Montreal Jazz Festival, and then we'll be done. Um, I, I believe you played here before. Yes. Uh, do you have any impressions of the Montreal Jazz Festival as a jazz Well, I've, I've been here to Montreal about five times. I've been to Canada, Nashville, Toronto, Edmonton, all over, uh, with my own band, actually playing uh, Latin music, or Latin jazz. Very pop people are very into me now, and through, through the records, actually, and the movies that I'm, I've done, Mambo Kings and all that thing. Uh, Montreal has always been a very hip city throughout the years for jazz, see? The time I used to come here, there were a lot of jazz clubs here. See? I don't find that anymore. We have to come to these big concerts to be able to perform, see? So I'm here alone on this trip. I left my boys behind, and uh, they're waiting for me to get back anxiously, naturally. They are, they're now on a, what you call, a forced vacation. The phone is not ringing, so they're on vacation. But for the music itself, I think Latin crossings is very important because people that love the, the pop music, like Eric Clapton type music and all that kind of music, that's a different type of crowd. And the people that love the Latin music, it's a different crowd. So we're gonna get them together. I don't know what to expect, but I know it's gonna be a very, very successful tour because we really have good musicians and we've all been concentrating on the rehearsals and all that. So we have a combination of both musics together, right here in Montreal. That's the first time this happened. And do you find that Montreal is a kind of place where you can do these different projects and they're, they're accepted more readily by the public? Well, I would say Montreal has all kinds of people. You know what I mean? You get a lot of South American people now. And the Canadians, they're beautiful. And the people from here, they love jazz anyway. And they do love our Latin rhythms. So I don't anticipate any problem whatsoever. They, they know who I am. And if they, they don't, it's too bad for them. You know what I mean? I've been around 50 years, so I don't care if they know me or they don't. All I know is that when we play for them, they're gonna feel it. That's where I'm at. I wanna make them happy. I want them to forget their problems. I want them to enjoy what we're gonna play for them. And they're gonna get our, our message. Okay, great. great. As Everything always. I said was